Last week, I asked you the question, which were the top five most simple to use champions in Marvel Contest of Champions? These could be champions that have no stress, easy rotations, easy to hit combinations, great damage, you know, all that great stuff. And your responses didn't fail to deliver when it came to giving the list of these particular easy to use champions. In fact, we had over 98 comments. So thank you very much to everybody that kind of like got involved with this and all of that information and data is how we create a tally system which then creates the top five and will go over the top 10. There is a slight issue with this in that I do think there was more of a push towards certain champions based on popularity and also in some cases it does seem that uh, maybe the combinations and rotations were of champions that were a little bit more that you would have to kind of rotate around or kind of understand because a lot of these, let's face it, easy to use champions is all about doing simple things as you're just hitting the enemy for five hit combos, building up to a special attack, throwing a special attack, boom, there it is, or simply just going off of parry heavy. The examples seem to be pushing towards that narrative. So let's say that a lot of champions that fit the bill were indeed hitting up that kind of parry heavy, easy to play narrative, or at least building up combos and stuff like that. The reason I feel a lot of favoritism, and I'm sure that a lot of people will become completely like saying, well, that's kind of a biased point where you're gonna say, Richard, and that is that I'm surprised King Groot wasn't at least in the top 10. The reason being, you don't actually have to do anything with this champion and it will rotate around fury buffs or regeneration. So you literally don't have to do anything except for just fire special attacks and it's just uh, as simple as that. So let's have a quick look over the data. So based on the voting tally system, which I create when every time a champion is mentioned, we kind of like do a little bit of a, a tally uh, that is, as I said, mentioned. It does look like a lot of popularity into certain champions that I thought was going to be the case with Archangel, that parry heavy, especially with 16 voting, and then right the way down to the likes of Nick Fury. And I guess that the rotations are going to be something of a mention. I don't know. At times, I do feel that with Nick Fury, if you want to get like, standard damage then yes play the champion standard but i do think there's a a little bit of extra element of complexity to try to get the most damage out of the champion as possible the same way that you could look at uh, again very easy to use champions like storm not well, storm uh, but star lord in particular because you just build combos and just hit him with big damage and there's nothing really to learn about that and you still get something good out of it and the same way that you would have uh, other champions uh, that do similar things like venom again very kind of like standard easy to use champion it was good to see though some mentions of the likes of wolverine which uh, you know even like got voted that very slim amounts it was still good to see the champion if anybody is interested in my top five my personal favorite top five so we'll go over the data of what people voted in a moment uh, my personal favorite five first of all archangel because again it's very much parry heavy in order to use the champion's amazing debuff strength and ability. Magneto, because again, it's all about the parry heavy type elements. There's two champions right there. One that's gonna be able to suppress health and this particular mutant that's able to take down champions that hashtag metal. And you know, even if you just like don't wanna play the champion, any kind of great way is recommended to parry heavy, by the way. Uh, SP3 rotations, but you wanna build those prowess, do as much damage as possible. OG Scarlet Witch, because let's face it, all you need to do is hit crits. That's basically it. With the champion there's nothing else to kind of like no you do your nullification at times you'll just hit a uh, you just hit an sp2 for a huge amount of damage if you've seen some of the content this month then you know exactly what i'm talking about so that's definitely one that's easy to use warlock which i guess is more of a debatable one because it could be some element of extra complexity to the rotations but i feel that building up to virus and kind of like having the infections build up to the, the virus kind of like uh, suppressing of the heal on enemies and as well just kind of good rotations around an SP2 and special attacks to kind of give things like SP1 is power control, SP3 is power control and also a little bit of healing, SP2 gives armor breaks and more chances of doing more kind of damage and stuff. So there's kind of like that's that's that. There are some other elements to Warlock, but I kind of feel like doing parry heavy and getting a bleed, again, is easy rotations on things. And uh, yeah, there's like no issue with that one. And of course, my final one, my, my kind of top like easy to play champion is King Groot. I use this for everything. And it's either a case that I wait for a rotation good around Fury buffs, which I don't have to do anything to build except for just like, just hitting to the champion, five hit combos. If I want to do an armor break, I'll just do an SP1. 
it's a case you don't need to worry about any specific types of rotations, building of missions or, and stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah, those are my personal ones. My favorite top five of easy to use and easy to play champions. Uh, but let's have a look at how everybody voted and look at whether or not there's some stuff I think we agree and don't agree with. So I think here is where we might see a few problems as to like favorites kind of like weaving themselves in into places. And maybe there's some extra elements of complexity to playing certain champions. Especially when you look down towards the end and how you kind of build up certain stuff. There are some definite champions that are that do fall into the easy to play category. Whether or not if you're using Cap Infinity War, which I really agree with, which hit into like an eighth spot with a few other champions. Cap Infinity War is just a simple kind of like well time block, do a parry, a heavy attack, and then an SP2, and that's your kind of like your damage sorted out. And just pairing champions that are kind of like certain types of classes on the team as a high awakened ability can leave some great kind of like utility and interaction measures so yeah i would agree with that the same way i agree with colossus because it is very much a case of easy building armor up buffs and uh, and then kind of like doing things like again parry heavy sp2 great amount great amount of damage angela that just missed out on the top 10 is a bit of a revelation because a lot of people were talking about this particular champion and coming off the back of using the champion for the likes of eternity of pain and also many months and many kind of interactions with cavalier difficulty and other content that she can be used up against she was used a lot i think for act 7 content because of utility factors and as well the building of armor up buffs and also those debuffs can be really handy. I think she was used quite a bit for the Superior Iron Man fight as well. No, not Superior Iron Man, wrong one. Superior Kang fight in uh, in Act 7.4.6. So look, that's a great champion. And just mix out in the top five spots. That's a little bit annoying and disappointing. Hercules is on there, but I get I, you know for some people I, they might they might debate that one. There is one that does fall into that great kind of like easy to use category where it's just SB2 rotations for keeping stun lock on if you want to or perma stun sorry which you can try and uh, try and do and that is uh, using hyperion i like him parry heavy do some fury buffs get up uh, get power game build without having to do anything sp2 sp3 is can, can give like a regeneration buff which i actually use quite a lot and is actually kind of like a sneaky amazing ability that champion has coming into the business area of things where you've got the likes of dr doom nick fury and warlock factoring into the second place position again we've talked about why warlock is a, is a kind of a good factor for that nick fury for me uh, and maybe this is like a personal thing i kind of find a bit iffy depending on the rotations that you might be doing could be a case of what people are trying to emphasize with this is doing parry heavies with Nick Fury, building up to that kind of like that that, that kind of wounding uh, element, those deep wounds, and then kind of applying more of a um, light hitting combo um, ender in order to kind of stimulate the more amounts of um, of bleed damage you can do, or the awakened version, which are in the phase two, you are more potent on damage. I want to say that that's maybe the case or interaction because you've as well got the build up of those tactical charges. I think that's what people were trying to kind of get at, but we didn't. I didn't see much of that kind of like a dissection and kind of like uh, information from the data. Uh, but in any case, uh, Doctor Doom again, SP one power control, lots of suppressions of buffs. I suppose easy rotation around SP3s, multiple SP3 rotations can be quite simple. The Corvus Glaive one is a bit of an issue. I think, again, it does go back to that, um, well, is Corvus and should Corvus be in there? Yes and no with this one. Again, like you have to go from fight to fight. You have to f you have to know about some of the champions you have to be interacting with in order to get the missions. But that's something as well. Is that going to be just as you play? If you were completely new to the game and you were going through a piece of content, and you went through some fights, say you, you hit up a, a mutant, you kill an Avenger, you kill a tech, that could be on one particular path. And unwittingly, and that's the code word, unwittingly build up three missions. Yes, you can build up more than that, you can build up four, whatever, but, uh, and you can build up whatever, but um, look, the fact is, you, this is all about like you kind of easy to use, and if you're unwittingly, then maybe you are. Maybe you would unwittingly try as a new player, grab those missions, do a load of damage, bing bada boom, big bada bosh. What am I talking about? I don't know. Corvus do a lot of damage. So yes, I guess that kind of like does figure, figure out that, uh, that third place quite comfortably. Which of course at number one leaves us Archangel. And I guess again, as I said, based on like what my favorite list is, or my favorite champions, and this particular one as well, it does make sense. One of the main things about this is the easy to use. Now we've talked about so many easy to use champions in this this one. You know, 
Domino was another kind of great one because you didn't really have to focus much and she was able to like slay Black Widow Deadly Origin. Um, you name it, there's loads in this list. But I think when we're kind of talking about easy to use, you don't get more easier than parry heavy. And let's face it, this champion's got it. You can even, when you're waiting for neurotoxins to kind of factor off, you're then able to rush in whilst the champion is stunned and reapply again. This month, the month of July, I have to figure what month we're in, July, uh, I use the champion against Valkyrie, and as well, you know, you can find him being used for so many different situations, and yep, as soon as you apply those neurotoxins, it's the end for any enemy. This is the champion I've got as a six star rank three, which I need to awaken uh, as soon as possible. It will it will happen, and uh, then we'll see how the good times drop. But that's been it. That's been a list. Uh, do you agree with it? Did you get involved? Did you not get involved? It's always good if you get involved with these things. Look out for more top five series. I will be posting to the community tab, which when you come into the channel, you'll be on home. If you just click the community, then what it does, it let, it'll let you know when I'm live streaming, number one. And number two, it will kind of go over a top five series or a series that we do with this. So yeah, thanks very much for supporting this content. Thanks very much for supporting the uh, the data collection because that's really helpful for these videos. Check out some other content which will be located on screen right about now and I'll see you in the next video whenever that will be. Cheers everybody, bye bye.